you might not appreciate bacteria in the same way you do a smartphone or an electric car, but bacteria are amazingly complex and can be surprisingly useful. And yes, there actually are large dairy farms powered by manure. The valued cow chips are rounded up and then sent to a large holding tank. Inside, manure-eating bacteria convert it to methane gas. That fuels an on-site power plant, which produces more than enough electricity to power the entire farm. The list of beneficial bacteria is quite long. These bugs eat plastic waste materials produced by humans that have littered the oceans. Some engineers are trying to harness bacteria to potentially replace silicon chips in computers, using the bugs to make smaller and faster processors. And then there's the friendly bacteria that benefit our health. They're essential to good digestion and healthy skin. Humans are composed of about 40 trillion cells. About the same number of bacteria reside on or inside each of us perhaps much more. Although, because bacteria cells are so small, altogether they weigh only about one three hundredth of an ounce. Finally, there's this remarkable bacteria discovered by a Danish scientist. It actually cleans up um, odoriferous mud. The harbor had pungent smells originating within the mud. The scientist found that the odor could be deleted by a community of collaborative bacteria. Thousands of bacteria form a wire that conducts electricity from the oxygen-deprived lower layer up to the oxygen-rich surface. The electric current allows bacteria deep in the mud to eat organic waste and remove the smelly hydrogen sulfide. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. Bacteria are incredible. It's true, some types of bacteria are harmful to humans, but countless others are superheroes of the microbial world. All this raises an obvious question. How did bacteria become so diverse and so ingenious? That's coming up next. Let's talk some more about factories. And what's cooler than a car factory? Robots in perfect sync, tons of steel being shaped and welded together, and hundreds of cars coming off the assembly line every day. And isn't it interesting to think about how one wrong keystroke can make the whole thing grind to a complete stop? Then, another to fully restore it. No, we haven't changed the topic from bacteria, but I do want you to think about what makes a huge coordinated operation like this possible. Now, back to the bugs. As we've seen, they can do very clever things. But the truth is, bacteria aren't smart. They don't have brains. They can't think or reason. Bacteria can do many remarkable things because they are pre-programmed with goals and purposes. Basically, bacteria are nanobots. In the same way that human computer code enables sophisticated mechanical robots to perform important jobs, bacteria have written code in their DNA that provides the instructions to do things, like manufacture magnetic crystals. So we can see that even bacteria are autonomous, highly developed life forms. But how did they get that way? Bacteria have been around since life began on Earth. Through the ages, variations have cropped up in their DNA. These are called mutations, and they can alter the structure of a cell. According to Darwin's theory, these small changes are what drive evolution. What's more, 
Darwin theorized that with myriad mutations over vast stretches of time, enormous changes occurred. Bacteria with helpful mutations survived. Bacteria with unhelpful mutations were eliminated by natural selection. Mutations can cause small changes. That's easily observed in nature. But here's the critical question. Can a sequence of many mutations added together over time result in a major gain of function? What might such an evolutionary process look like for our old friend, the magnetotactic bacterium? How did it evolve by tiny steps? Back in the days before they could produce magnetite crystals, ancient bacteria might have been swimming along, foraging for food wherever they could find it. Then, over a vast stretch of time, a long series of unguided mutations supposedly occurred. Our imagined result is that the bacteria gained the ability to accumulate large quantities of iron. Then, another long series of unguided mutations resulted in the magnetosome membranes to hold the toxic iron. After yet another long series, voila! A magnetite crystal was produced. That's impressive, but the problem is that, so far, none of this would be helpful to the bacteria. Many eons later, more crystals show up. But they're of no value either, unless they're lined up. Finally, the transporters arrange them on the filament, and the magnetic fields can be accessed. But you can see that it's not until all the pieces are in place and fully functional that there is an actual benefit to the bacteria. Color me skeptical. I'd like to suggest to you that the parts of the magnetotactic bacterium did not develop gradually over time through random evolution. Rather, this amazing little creature has all the characteristics of deliberate, intelligent design. At the core of every modern factory is sophisticated computer programming. Even a tiny error can gum up the works. By the same logic, as we look at the astonishing factory that science has discovered within bacteria, we realize it too requires very specific instruction from its DNA code to build and run its machinery. In Darwin's time, the bacterium was thought to be a very simple organism. There didn't appear to be much to it. So back then it was easy for scientists to imagine it could arise randomly without much difficulty. But as science advanced, we have discovered that bacteria are unfathomably complex. That functional complexity is overwhelming evidence that these nanobots were purposely, intelligently designed.